Hi everyone, it's Kara, and today we're going to talk about how you can set up Python with Turtle. Python is a coding language, which is just a special set of words or instructions that let you talk to the computer and give it commands. Turtle is an additional set of commands that will let us do something we normally can't do in Python, and that's draw. So here's an example of a finished project. Typed on the left, we see all the code. Sometimes we might call this a script or a program. Don't worry if you don't understand everything we've written just yet, you will soon. Each line is one command to the computer, and they're numbered so that you can keep track of them. At the top middle of the screen, we see the run button. When we press this button, our code will run, which means the computer starts doing the commands that we've written down from top to bottom. Now on the right, we have the canvas, which is showing us what the code we have written creates. Moving around the canvas, we see an arrow drawing stars. This arrow is the turtle. When we use Python with turtle, we will be telling the turtle what it needs to do to create the result that we want, which will normally be a drawing or a game. We also see the console tab, now this is where the computer will talk to us. It's not too interesting right now, but keep an eye on it because I think the computer might have something to say later. Now, let's try and make something new. This is what a blank project looks like. The only difference really is that there's no script on the left because we need to write it. We're gonna start by adding some things that we'll have to put at the start of all of our projects. The very first thing we need to write is import turtle. This command makes sure the computer knows the words we will use to talk to the turtle. You can think of it kind of like a dictionary, where the computer can look up the commands that we type and find out what they mean. The next thing we need to do is make a turtle for us to give commands to. To do this, first we have to pick a name. Now it can be anything you want, as long as it's only one word long and doesn't start with a number, but I'm gonna name mine Junie. Type the name that you pick here on the next line. It might look weird to have a name that doesn't start with a capital letter, but in computer science, all of our names start with lowercase letters. After we pick a name, we add an equal sign and then the command turtle.turtle. .turtle. This turns Junie into a turtle. Don't forget to add the capital T in the second turtle and empty parentheses at the end. Otherwise, Junie won't get turned into a turtle right and none of our commands will work. Now that we have our turtle set up, we have to figure out what we want the result of our code to be. Today, I just want Junie to draw a square. Unfortunately, I can't tell Junie draw a square. She doesn't understand that we have to use a specific set of commands that the computer knows. One command that the computer knows that might be helpful is the forward command, which tells the turtle to go forward. To use this command, we must write our turtle's name, then a dot, then the word forward. Finally, we have to add parentheses at the end. Inside these parentheses, we need a number that tells the computer how far the turtle should move forward in pixels. I'm going to put 100, but you can try whatever number you want. Now that we've given our turtle a command, we can run our code and see what happens. Do you see how Junie moved forward and drew a line behind her? That was her doing our forward command. Let's say that this line is one side of our square. What will we have to do next? We need to change our turtle's direction so it can draw the next side. To let us do this, there are two commands that turn our turtle, the right command and the left command. To use either of these commands, we will again start with our turtle's name and then a dot and then the word right or left, followed by parentheses. I'm gonna turn Junie to the right. All of our commands will actually start with our turtle's name and a dot, then the name of the command and parentheses. What sometimes changes is what goes inside those parentheses. For example, in this case, instead of telling the computer a certain number of pixels to move our turtle forward, 
we need to tell it a certain number of degrees that our turtle should turn. In this case, because squares have right angles and we're trying to draw a square, we need to turn 90. Let's run the code. See how now our turtle draws a line, then turns at the end? Now when we ran our code, it did both commands. So she moved forward and then turned right, and her head's now facing down. We can see what happens when we add another forward command. If we run it again, this time she moves forward, turns, and then moves forward in a different direction because that's the direction she was facing. We can add one more right, and now when we run it again, we see she's facing in another direction. We actually have all the code to finish our square. We just need to go forward again, then right, then forward, and then right. If we run it, we now see that we have a finished square, which was the goal of this code. Nice job. But now that we're done, let's do a little bit of experimenting. Let's see what happens if we make a mistake and take away the value in one of our forward commands. Can you think of why this might cause a problem in our code? Without this value, the turtle won't know how far forward it should move. When we run the code this time, do you see the red square with an exclamation point that appears next to the console? This is how the computer will talk to us. It's saying that it can't do part of the code. Now there are a lot of reasons that this could happen, but normally the computer will tell us what the problem is. When we click over to the console, we see a long sentence in red that says type air forward takes exactly one positional argument, zero given on line seven. Do you have any idea what this could mean? It's actually just telling us that the forward command needs one argument, which just means value, and that we didn't give it one. It also tells us what line the error happened on. This is often the most helpful part because even if you don't understand what the computer is trying to tell you, you can focus your attention on the line that it says is wrong and look for mistakes yourself. With the tactics we learned today, you can now draw almost any shape you want. See what happens when you add more commands and try different values. I hope you had fun setting up Python with Turtle today.